Greetings YouTube. This is your boy Freelancer Joe here once again and it's well it's really only my second video so a little premature to say series of videos. Uh, continuing uh, the path of trying to live up to the moniker of Freelancer Joe. I had meant to upload yesterday's video you know yesterday but uh, it turns out even with my beefy new laptop processing the video rendering two streams for a video uh, it would take about five hours for a 30 minute clip so yeah nah, that wasn't happening uh it does mean i'm going to try a new setup for my recording which is i now i'm using my virtual box guest os to run the video capture well it's not really it's just using the camera to display my image and I'm still using my recording software to capture the desktop. So hopefully it won't take nearly as long to do the video render. Anyway, so let's get started. Um, where we left off yesterday was I had demonstrated that I was able to set up a web application, or at least demonstrated the ability to cut and paste code. And I intend to continue doing that today. Now, once we have a web application, one of the key things that needs to be done is displaying different views based on a user's action. So, <clears throat> first thing we're going to do is we're going to create components, uh, or what React calls components, uh, which render different views. Uh, this is my project. This is the same directory structure, source folder, JavaScript folder. I have my components uh, broken down by container and presentational. Uh, I believe these, and uh, we'll go with container for now, and views within the container. Um, so the simplest thing to do is what I always do, which is just copy an existing thing, and we'll go ahead, paste it, rename and trim. So we'll go with the alpha view. Again, not the most sophisticated approach, but it is the sort of thing that works for me. And rather than render this thing, we're going to just go ahead. and render something that shows that we're in the alpha view, which isn't that. Pointless. Still have an error. And do you not like that? No, you don't like that. Sure, there's documentation somewhere that clearly explains where the appropriate syntax goes. And I could spend the time looking it up or I could just do this. And create another component. 
and shockingly, we are going to call it, can you guess? Yeah, the Bravo View. And granted, I'm sure I could also do a complete <clears throat> search and replace within this file to rename it. But much like how I was handling my package installs, I like going through bit by bit just to help jog my very poor memory. Actually, it's not that bad, but when it comes to very small, minor details, it can be problematic, as the cool kids say nowadays. <clears throat> Alright, so we have our two components, and now we need to wire them in. And I have my routes for set components. Uh, no, do I have them? I have the view container, don't I? Yes, the view container. So, of course, we have to import said components. stuff so this is where things kind of get intermixed uh, sometimes so one thing references another thing and that thing references the other thing and it's uh, interdependent circular so you kind of have to just grit your teeth and start somewhere and then circle back uh, so this is the view container, which is contained within the root, and the view is the one that actually handles the routing for the different views slash components. And as you can see here, I have a switch, which based upon the route value will display the appropriate thing. So I match them against predefined keys in this file called route underscore keys which is a constant so in here i'll go ahead and add one and two one for alpha and one for bravo So that's in there, and since that's in there, we can go ahead and we'll just add in routes for the alpha and bravo components. Okay, <clears throat> so that means we have our two components to display, Alpha and Bravo. We have routes for set components, and then we allow switching for those routes. And yet, what we are missing, among a number of things, is going to be the ability to navigate between those two. Um, let me see. Okay, so this is all... 
Actually, you know what? Let me double check. No, 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 not action. Store. Okay. Store does that. Huh. You know, at some point, I define what the default route should be. Trend board did that. Uh, ah. The entry route. Yes. And the entry route currently goes to splash page but for now we're going to go uh, it's kind of foolish we'll change that to the alpha so when the web app comes up it's going to go straight to the alpha page um, but we still don't now have a way to go between alpha and bravo and bravo to alpha now if you look at my demo thing navigation basically occurs between this transition bar or this toolbar as well as buttons down here unfortunately this toolbar is configured uh, well, we could say uh, a configuration file although it's not really a configuration file because it's in a JavaScript thing all right, but it loads up these values from the toolbar. This toolbar section. So if we just get rid of these old ones, and I'm pretty certain I could comment these out. Oh, how am I doing on time? Okay, I told them that's good. And we'll change this to. Do, 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 do. Alpha, and then transition key, which should match the hard coded route key. Alpha, and another entry. Bravo. So that means, in theory anyway, the next time this comes up, and this is on my local host and not my actual website. <clears throat> Instead of all of these, it's going to say Alpha and Bravo. Hopefully. And let's go back to this because while I set up the routes, all right, well, let's take a closer look at what exactly that does. So that toolbar consists of a bunch of navigation buttons. The buttons, when they're clicked, cause this function, which is passed into it, on transition requested, which is on transition click in the view container. So if we go take a look at that bad boy, what that guy says is when he receives a certain key, he pushes something into the application history. And that causes a refresh, and then it matches up, and then it does the routing. So what we need to add in here, our conditionals for the Alpha and Bravo routes. And obviously there's a lot of excess code. because Captain Cut and Paste is hard at work. All right, so let's see if I got this correctly. We have our two components. When a button is clicked, it'll change the history, which will change the route. Switch can then accept those new routes. Route keys are defined. And how we're going to navigate is set up through there. Hmm. I believe that should be enough. Well. 
let's run and pan to start and get cracking and see if it did work. Hopefully it won't take as long to download the packages. It doesn't have to re-download them because they're already there. That loaded up. Uh, you know. hmm. So navigation was correct. But the entry point wasn't. <sighs> Route keys dot entry. Yeah, so that's right. Certain about this. <clears throat> so index comes up. The entry route is the entry route. Switch route exact path goes to that. I wonder if I got that mixed up. Root container. Route props. Ah, there we go. That's really sloppy. So the root container, uh, when React mounts the component to the virtual DOM, it's using as the root path splash. I wonder if I did that on purpose for a reason. I would think that it should go to entry because the root container is not obviously the root. All right, so that is that. Hopefully, let's see. But alpha, ah, alpha, and ah, Bravo didn't work. Uh, okay. And why, dear sir, did Bravo not work? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that an error? No transition with key bravo, key bravo. State object transition objects. Hmm. Is that actually my reducer? I don't think the reducers did anything. So the reducer is where React Redux updates the application state based on whatever action was dispatched. Hmm. 
but I would think I only need that. I only use that for the transition components, the things that make it slide in and out and up and down. When you don't cut and paste correctly, you do occasionally have that problem. <laughs> All right, let's see if that works. All right, there we go. We now go to alpha. Oh, let's double check. So we go to the root, and it goes to alpha, bravo, alpha, bravo, alpha, bravo, alpha, bravo. Hmm. Okay. Not too shabby, I think. Okay. Not particularly magnificently impressive but I have now demonstrated the ability to add uh, multiple views to a web application and views that can be manipulated by user actions all right, so we've got a web app, and we've got a web app that displays different things based on a user's actions. So that's pretty solid, or rudimentary, simple, but a solid start. Uh, is there something else I want to... I've got a few minutes. Again, I'm still going to try and keep these videos under 30 minutes. Uh, at least until I hammer out uh, the whole video editing process. So I could remove components, or I could add one more, just so that, yeah, we'll, we'll, add, it, we'll add a chart later. Just to go through it all again. Okay, so uh, let's close that, close that, close that, close that. So we have a component. Now we create a component that will have our view or whatever we want to display. Simple components. Again, my whole approach is to build up slowly. Well, hopefully not too slowly. Um, a lot of times in software development, I, I imagine in lots of things in life anyway, 80% of the work, no wait, 80% is it? Yeah, 80%. 80% of the work takes 20% of the time, but 20% of the work takes 80% of the time. These are really large, basic chunks that aren't so bad. Or at least I hope I'm not making them look too bad. I just say, never actually imagined what I look like while I'm working. I wonder how many of us ever have. All right, so we have that component, right? Uh-huh. And now we need to update our route keys. To 
add the new route. And then, what was in the root? No, the root was just that, okay. And then in our view container, which manages which route to display, we import our newly created component. our transition function when the user does a click there we update the route switching we still need to display the button for switching to set new component and this isn't specific to react this is just how I set it up so uh, blah, blah, blah. there's lots of fancy things we could do with this it's also part of why I set up my website as a web app like this so it's more configurable or at least it requires somewhat less coding coding <laughs> and lets me do more of my favorite thing of copying and pasting <laughs> so we got uh, config with the new button route he's updated our new component all right let's fire it up again UI demo Alpha Bravo Charlie, as you can see, that's there. Bravo, Bravo still works, and now there's Charlie, and navigation is seamless and smooth between the two. Again, not very impressive, but a basic and necessary component for any web application. Well, I guess a really simple one wouldn't need it, but most people want something a little more than simple. So I want advanced, but I'm just demonstrating simple. <laughs> everything is built upon everything else. Start small, go big. Um, yeah. Oh, no. You know what? Number one rule. You achieve something big, you commit that stuff. You back it up. You add a sort of version control. Uh, here, uh, uh, you add, uh, so now I'm adding the components that I just created. branch um, what do I want to call this uh, uh, routing demonstration and we push it to our repository as you 
claims to have pushed. Um, let's go ahead and make sure that we do. And we go for demo. Let's see if routing demonstration is there. Source. JS components container view. All right, and there's Alpha Bravo and Charlie. All right, so I think that is oh yeah, definitely enough for today. Uh, let me see. After this, the next logical thing to demonstrate would uh, be capturing user input and user selections uh, i mean if you just had something that was purely presentational then it would make more sense to have just a plain website with you know html and css uh, but if you got to let users enter things that means you're going to want to do something with those things at a later point or even an immediate point i suppose so i believe next time we'll be tackling that and unless i continue to Hmm. experience hijinks with my whole video recording setup so you know thanks for spending uh, the time watching this if you did manage to make it to the end if you have any comments or suggestions please leave it in the comment box below uh, like it and subscribe if you feel like it and i will catch you later take care and god bless